What did Vikings look like and what is the genetic history of Vikings? The Vikings are traditionally portrayed as being tall, blonde and strong. But how close to the truth is this? An Arab author described the Vikings as being as tall as date palms and having reddish skin. He also described them as having perfect physiques. So what colour hair did Vikings have? Well, in Western and Scandinavia, um, around Denmark region today, it is considered that those Vikings, those Danish Vikings, probably had red hair for most part. In other parts of Scandinavia, such as Sweden, however, blondes seem to be more common. A 2020 study, however, challenged the notion that the Vikings had blonde hair. They noted that the Vikings often had children with other people from other lands, and that the Vikings actually had dark hair in large part, as opposed to the blonde commonly associated with the Vikings. How tall were Vikings? Well, although this is a simple question, that the answer is annoyingly far from simple. Um, I actually spent about an hour this morning trying to figure out um, exactly how tall Vikings were. Um, there's various theories and there's various estimations and getting a precise answer is quite difficult. Um, in general, they seem to have been around for males anyway, um, 5 foot 6, 5 foot 7, uh, and for females 5 foot 1 on average I would say. Um, th that's the general average you just saw. Some maybe a, obviously a little taller than averages, maybe 5 foot 8 or so, um, but certainly not, you know, massive giants. Um, that, that are often depicted in TV series, etc. Um, whether Vikings were selected for their height is, is hard to say, but certainly from the, um, from the kind of studies that they've done on skeletons, etc., it seems to be that general range. Compared to the rest of Europe, that seems to be somewhat average. Um, Vikings were potentially slightly taller than other Europeans. Um, but there's so many factors that went into it because um, we know obviously there's genetic component to height um, but access to nutrition even today is still a major determinant of height. Um, so, so they were relatively tall but nothing, no, no giants um, but I'm sure there would have been giant Vikings amongst them because this is obviously just an average um, around 5 foot 6, 5 foot 7 for males and around 5 foot 1 for, for females. It is thought in the Viking Age that male and female faces were much more similar in Scandinavia than they are today. Female Viking faces were considered to be much more masculine than today, with more prominent brow ridges. Male faces on the other hand were more feminine than they are today with less pronounced jaws and brow ridges. Because of the similarity, it's actually extremely difficult to determine whether a Viking was male or female by looking at the skull alone. Other factors, other markers need to be taken into consideration, like the size or the width of the pelvis, for instance. Beards were very common amongst Viking men, and Viking men also had long hair, around shoulder length, with slaves for the most part being known the ones who had short hair. If we look at the body composition of Vikings, most research suggests that they were more muscular than we are today, mainly due to the fact of the physical environment they grew up in and all the hard labour and hard physical work they had to do. It wasn't all pretty, however. From around 500 skeletons found in Denmark, Danish Vikings showed signs of tooth problems and aching joints. So if you're wondering where I am today, and obviously it's absolutely stunning, um, it's just Carron Valley. Um, one of the benefits of staying in Scotland is that there's such beauty just on your doorstep. Um, this is about five, 10 minutes from where I live, just in the car, or maybe 20 minutes in the car, this spot. But if you're around this area, um, Carron Valley is definitely worth coming to. Um, hope you hope it transfers just how beautiful it is and it's quite still as well which is nice sometimes when you're filming near water um, the water can completely destroy the audio if it's you know if it's kind of running quite quickly but um, yeah beautiful so the Viking Age obviously was an increase of people, goods, movement in general as the Vikings raided other lands, took goods back, took people back, took slaves back. So what impact did the Viking Age have on the genetics of Scandinavia itself? Well, a study published in Cell just last month um, showed that there actually was a, a somewhat sizable increase in uh, Baltic and Eastern Baltic and also British Irish ancestry into Scandinavia during the Viking Age. This is obviously for two reasons. Firstly, many slaves were forced to come back to Scandinavia by the Vikings. But secondly, many people, particularly probably from Britain and Ireland, many Christian monks 
um, went on missionaries to Scandinavia during the Viking Age. They more willfully ended up in Scandinavia. Another interesting aspect when you look at the genetic history of Vikings is that the Viking, the Viking people, and Viking essentially just meant Scandinavians who would go on voyages to, to raid lands overseas, um, to raid and pillage overseas, to go Viking. Um, obviously Vikings themselves a bit of a, is, is a word we use today. One interesting aspect is Vikings lived in the coastal areas of Scandinavia and genetic studies have shown that the Viking population is actually genetically quite distinct or was genetically distinct um, from the mainland peasant population of Scandinavia at that time. So the Vikings, because they lived in coastal areas and because Obviously the, the trade and the pillaging and the, and the voyages overseas meant that there was so much intermingling between Vikings um, and other people. And Vikings often had children with other people from other lands. So the genetic diversity of Vikings compared to the mainland peasant population of Scandinavia was quite distinct uh, and quite large. Um, just given the genetic variation of Vikings compared to the Scandinavian peasants of the mainland, which is one um, interesting feature. A 2020 study on the genetics of the Viking Age found that many Vikings of Scandinavia had relatively similar genetics to the Iron Age population of Scandinavia. However, there was a larger than anticipated influence from Southern and Eastern European populations. This 2020 study also found that Danish-like ancestry um, is pretty common or more common in England. Swedish-like ancestry is more common to the East in the kind of Baltic area. And Norwegian-like ancestry is common in Ireland, Iceland and Greenland. One problem when looking at the impact that Danish Vikings had on other territories, particularly when we look at the British Isles and England, or what we call England today, and this is a problem many in the comments have previously flagged. It's extremely difficult to distinguish the presence of Viking genetics from Denmark and Anglo-Saxon genetics from Denmark, with many Anglo-Saxons coming from Denmark. So this often creates confusion and noise in the samples. If you see Danish genetics in someone's genetic code from, say, England, England today, could that be from the Anglo-Saxons or the Vikings, a Danish Viking? It's very hard to distinguish between the two. Another interesting aspect of the Vikings that this 2020 study touched on is that Vikings potentially went Viking together, went on raids together with their close kin, with relatives, with family members. A Viking burial in Estonia, made up of around 41 Swedish Vikings, found that four Vikings buried side by side in this burial were brothers, direct kin, and another one was related. This obviously is just one instance, and this is just one burial ground. Was it just coincidental that brothers were found side by side? Or does it imply that it was commonplace in the Viking Age for Vikings to go on raids with their close kin, with brothers, with family members? And this is simply a reflection of this. The traditional argument would have been that chiefs in the Viking Age would have selected the strongest, um, more fierce warriors to go on raids with them. But this may not be the case. The Vikings obviously had such a profound legacy um, in so many aspects of our world today. Even so many words in the English language we get derived um, are derived from Viking words, from Old Norse words. The Vikings have obviously captured many people's imaginations, including myself. Um, the exact look and genetics of the Vikings is obviously hard to say, 100%. But hopefully this video has give you a, gave you a, a kind of brief oversight um, of some of the main theories. Um, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below, however. What are your thoughts on the genetic history of the Vikings, on how the Vikings looked, um, how tall they are? Because um, that was quite hard to, to find any sort of definitive information on. Um, and just any other, any other general thoughts on the Vikings um, and any future videos or angles you would like to see on the Vikings in particular. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support this work through Patreon, buymeacoffee.com or donate through PayPal, all the links will be in the description below. Um, you can also obviously tell your friends and family about this channel, share the channel on social media um, and really try and raise awareness about this channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell as usual. Um, but thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.